So this is going to be part 2 of 11-1-3. We're going to add and subtract rational expressions. So we're going to continue on adding a rational expression and subtracting a rational expression. So we're going to get right into it with a little bit of a review of what we did in the last lesson. The first thing we said is for us to be able to add or subtract, we have to make sure that our, the denominators are the same. And so the way that we validated that is we said they have to have the same factors. So if you notice, these are already factored out. And so because they're already factored out, they both have a factor of 3 and they both have a factor of x plus 8. And so now I can add them together. And so 3 plus 4 is 7, and then the denominator stays the same. Now sometimes there might be simplifying, but in this instance there's no factor of 7 that simplifies with the denominator. So to make them the same here, I have a factor of 3. I don't have a factor of 3 here, so I need to multiply by 3 over 3. Now they both have an x. So they both have a 3 and they both have an x. So now the denominators are the same. 2 minus 4 times 3, which is 12, over 3x. And so then that's going to be negative 10 over 3x. Once again, you check to see if something would simplify. Nothing simplifies because there's no factor of 10 that simplifies with 3x. Woo! Turning up the heat. So now for this one, I have a factor of x plus 3. I have a factor of x minus 1. These are, that's a massive factor, x squared plus 2x minus 3. I'm going to have to factor it. So that factors into, see, factors of 3 that add to 2. So that's going to be x plus 3 and x minus 1. Well, that's convenient. So now let's, I'm just going to rewrite this. All right, so now I have to check for factors. So this has a factor of x plus 3 in the bottom. This one doesn't. This one does. So I need to give this one a factor of x plus 3. So I'll do that top and bottom. So now, OK, we're done here, moving over here. OK, this has a factor of x minus 1. This one doesn't. This one does. So this needs a factor of x. I'll do a different color. x minus 1. So now if you look at them, they all have x plus 3. They all have x minus 1. So all the factors in the denominator are the same. So now I can combine them together. And so this is going to give me 2 times x minus 1 minus x times x plus 3. Now sometimes here when it's a minus it helps if we put parentheses around that because I'm going to subtract everything and then plus x squared plus 2 and you always do that with a minus, you're going to subtract everything. And so that's why I put in parentheses helps with that. And then on the bottom, I have x plus 3 times x minus 1. So distributing that 2, 2x two minus 2, that is x squared plus 3x. So distributing that negative, so minus x squared minus 3x. And then I have the plus x squared plus 2. And that's all over x plus 3 and x minus 1. So now things that cancel out, the negative x squared and the positive x squared, the negative 2 and the positive 2, and so it looks like I just have 2x minus 3x, which is negative x. And so that right there is going to be my answer. So just know that the steps are the same, even though the problem looks a little more complicated, the steps are the same. All I did is just make sure that all the denominators had the same factors. So this one here, this is pretty much as complicated as any problem could ever get. It won't get any more complicated than this problem. But I just need to look and make sure all the factors are the same. 
So in this instance, 1 over, now I want to factor this. So the factors of 6 that add to 5, but positive 6, so that would be x plus 3, and that's the xbox way, x plus 2, minus, and then the factors of 2 that add to 3, so x plus 2 and x plus 1, and then plus, and then the factors of negative 4 that add to negative 3, so that's negative x minus 4 and x plus 1. So I want to double check and make sure all of those look good. All right, I'm going to get rid of this for room. So I have an x plus 3 in the denominator. This one doesn't. And this one doesn't. Okay, so they all have x plus 3's. Now, x plus 2. This one has an x plus 2. This one doesn't. So, x plus 2 and x plus 2. So now, checking these x plus 2's, they all have x plus 2's. x plus 1's. This one doesn't, but this one does. Okay, so this one doesn't have an x plus 1. So I'll multiply it on this side. Okay, so now they all have x plus 1s, and then x plus 3s, x plus 3, and x plus 3. Okay, so they all have x plus 3s. Now x minus 4. This one doesn't have an x minus 4. Oh man, this is funny. And the middle one doesn't have an x minus 4. just goes on forever, doesn't it? Okay, that looks about right. So they all have x plus 4's. They all have x plus 1's. They all have x plus 3's. They all have x plus 2's. And then what I did to the top, I did to the bottom, right? So you can't just do it on the bottom. You have to do it to the top and the bottom. And everything's being multiplied. Whew. Okay, so foiling this top here. So that's going to give me x squared minus 3x minus 4, and that's times 1. Now minus parentheses 2 times. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. So foiling that, you're going to get x squared minus x minus 12, and then plus, and then 1 again. So foiling that through, you're going to get x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now that's all over all of these factors. And it doesn't matter which order that you write them. I just looked at the middle one first, and I just chose the order that I wrote them there. So now we got to simplify this. So this negative 2 is going to distribute everything. So that's negative 2x squared minus, or plus 2x plus 12. So now combining like terms, x squared plus x squared is 2x squared minus 2x squared, so actually those will cancel out. Then we have the minus 3x, 2x, and 5x. So negative 3x plus 2x is minus x plus 5x is 4x. Negative 4 plus 12 is 8, 8 plus 6 is 14, and that's going to be all over, and that's my answer. Now you're probably thinking, well, what? check for reducing. Okay, well, if I factor out a 2, I get 2x plus 7, and so in my head I was able to look that there's no factors that are going to reduce. But that's our answer. So what did we learn today? Well, we just continued on adding and subtracting rational expressions. We added a few more difficult problems to that. One thing that I kept consistent, though, is to be able to add or subtract fractions, I made sure that the denominators were the same.